Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanal Is It Done. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this first map for today's exhibition stream is going to be between 400 and Google Frog on La Isla Bonita. Let's begin. 400 going for the Spiderbot Factory, and Google Frog going for Clogibot a little over the edge as well. Starting at the edge of their territory, so slightly proxied. Against Spider Factory, though, that is actually a really good idea. Google Frog likely doesn't know where 400 is set up at first, but they're going to guess correctly. 400 at the same t in the same way is going to actually not guess correctly. They're just going to be very thorough. However, they should find out right about now. Like that. Yeah, that should have been visible. Yeah, that would have been visible. So 400 and Google Frog both know where the other is. And at this point, I'd say Google Frog has the advantage just by positioning. I mean, 400, the main advantage they have from the Spider Factory is, of course, being able to go over cliffs. But given the fact that Google Frog minimized the distance for them and didn't make cliffs a problem for themselves, I don't know that that's going to be a big deal. I mean, the thing is, Google Frog right now is in a position where their main base, it's defended directly. This choke point, I mean, it's relevant somewhat, but not really. We would have 400 going over this cliff, if at all possible. Like, this is the, this is the point of focus. So, nice calling Google Frog's part. I'm curious if they were playing games earlier and ran into that. At any rate, Google Frog is going to be going in with... Sorry, Fireplex is going to go in with the opening red back, and otherwise actually being pretty passive. Google Frog trying to stop the direct assault, or at least make sure that they know that an assault happening along the most direct rush path is going to be something intercepted by Glaives and known about. But it looks like 400 is just trying to protect their territory. Just trying to set up slowly but surely. Not really too worried about getting rushes down. Good call on the red back, though, allowing them to stop the Glaives coming in. That would have really been a problem to this weaver down the line. Right off the bat, no big deal. I mean, the weaver is able to do this without even risking his own life, but it's good for it. The red back allowing these metal extractors to be alive without too much trouble. Of course, that means in both cases, no one's really focusing on this area over here in the corner, which at this point is not a big deal. But I'm curious how that's going to work out in terms of overall defensiveness, because this is a very atypical way of playing Lays de Bonita. Normally, both players will start in the center, and then will expand along to this expansion over here, and then continue either up front or in front of the base. I mean, it's a very StarCrafty style map, and that's generally how it's played, but 0k being 0k, we're seeing that's not at all the case. At this point, though, Google Frog getting a bit ahead in their economy. At the same time, 400 being quite mindful of the possibility of Mass Glaive coming into their main base, because this is going to be the rush path. Like, this... Natural expansion here, that is where Google Frog is going to come in. So, 400's play is pretty well on point there. It's a good call in the defense positioning. That being said, though, Google Frog is not really getting territory as quickly as I would expect, given the fact that this defense is being built up. 400 has defenses. That usually comes at the cost of territory. But right now, Google Frog is not really taking full advantage of that. 400 being quite wise as well, sending fleas around the map to make sure that they know exactly what Google Frog's up to. And enough fleas that if they find undefended metal extractors or undefended constructors, those constructors and metal extractors will be destroyed. I mean, it'll do nothing against Lotus, but it will do something against anything else that's found stray. Unfortunately for 400, there goes all of their fleas, so Google Frog pretty much eliminating 400's ability to completely spy on them. <laughs> but... Otherwise, not really affecting all that much about their current plans. I mean, 400 knows that there's a crawling defense line pushing towards them. I'm sorry, 400 knows that. And 400 is also aware enough of where things are, and they probably are going to guess that rockers are being built, because Spiderbot Factory, you build the rockers! That's what you do! It's just part of the game. So 400 is most likely to be going for that. And... Ooh... Not managing to get a whole lot of damage done. Losing quite a few fleas in the process, but still good scouting. And if they find this metal extractor here... Oh no, they're not going to find it! They're going towards the main... The main expansion, which is even more lucrative as far as dealing damage goes. Google Frog is going to be knocked down to parity with 400 in just a second. With all these metal extractors going down, that is going to... Oh no, 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 don't get too close! Don't get too close! What are you doing? 400, you're going to lose your fleas! This... Like, these fleas are getting too close to the metal extractor. They're going to die the first metal extractor they kill. 
all five of them are going to be destroyed in, like, two seconds, as soon as this is destroyed. Bam! There go all the fleas. Sometimes I wonder, like, if that mechanic is even worth having, because it seems like it just causes a lot of weird confusion. I mean, on the other hand, I guess you could say that for not paying attention, it causes punishment. Like, you know, they, the fleas were not attended to, so they got too close to the metal extractor, so they died. Because the metal extractor exploded. But that's like, like, for metal extractors and caretakers, that seems like a bit of a weird thing to have. I don't know, I'd have to, it'd be one of those things to discuss, but I don't really, I don't really know that that's that great of a mechanic. It seems it just keeps coming up and it, if you know that it's there, if you know to click on a thing and hold space, hit X, like hold space and X to figure out where the heck things are or could be, then you figure it out. Otherwise, you kind of hooped. You just end up losing units for no good reason. I mean, that was a great raid. It just got stopped because, oh, hey, look, you had your fleas too close to a metal extractor when it got killed. Like, you did something right, but not perfectly, so screw you. Yeah. Also, one of my old Acron viewers is now saying hi. Hi, Cybernetic Pony. Yes, for those of you not aware, I used to cast a little known game called Acron. It's a time travel RTS that's about as hard to follow as it sounds. That was most of what I did while casting. It was actually trying to explain what the hell was going on. Thankfully, Zero K is a touch easier to follow. At any rate, Hermit's coming in here. Strong defensive option, too. I agree with the reuse of the Rockos overall, but the Hermit's... I mean, the meta between Spider and Cloaky has revolved around the Rocco and around trying to deal with Rocco. I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing mass fleas coming out here, though. We're seeing a lot of Hermits, which I still agree with to some extent. They are particularly slow units. They're particularly tough units. The Rockos will eventually wear them down, but... If they're not focused on killing the Rockos, then that should be alright. If they go after the Rockos, then the Rockos would win. Which is why... There we go, there's the fleas. That's why you want to make fleas, so that you can deal with that stuff instead. As for... Anything else? Google Frog coming in with a couple ravens over here to get rid of the Stardust. That's not a bad idea, but... The better idea was the fact that the ravens did take all of the defenders offline. Or at least use all their missiles. Allowing the glaives pretty much free reign over this entire section. Though once again, explosions gonna come through, take out a few glaives. But at the same time, Google Frog losing the north or the southeast to the hermits, because now the hermits they're gonna go over the cliff here, and there's nothing to defend anything past this cliff. Not without going through the choke points here. So Google Frog hiding their worker. Good plan. Still, though, managing to get quite a lot of pressure onto 400. 400 losing this expansion over the north is likely to be the last thing they're going to lose since the southwest... Or not the last thing they lose, I mean they're going to lose the game if they don't, aren't careful. But yeah, losing the Stardust here, that's pretty much opening up everything. Leaving them fully vulnerable. They had no real depth to their defense. They had the one defenses... Or the one set of defenses with the Stardusts. They had nothing else beyond that. And of course the chainsaws to try to deal with the, ra the ravens, but otherwise nothing. So the glaives are going to be able to get rid of 400's commander, probably be able to get rid of everything in the base. A few of them are going to die in the process, but Google Frog being a bit more attentive and keeping most of their glaives away from the commander as it dies. The Stardust still doing a number, but two or three glaives getting in the back with nothing to really stop them except for a handful of banshees. This is probably going to be GG regardless. 400's losing so much of their wind generation production, they're losing quite a bit of their metal as well. And on top of the raid over to the south, and the raids over to the southwest as well, I mean, and the fact that the Hermits, I mean, they won, but they aren't moving at all. 400's clearly paying full attention to their main base, and Google Frog's able to make that work beautifully for them. And another Stardust gone, just all that does is delay things. I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing 400 build like, more, like, the Lotuses and such. I agree with the Chainsaw, it's dealing a lot of damage to the Ravens, making it very difficult for that to become a problem, but the thing is, this is too late! These Glaives are going to win the game. This is it. They're going to be tearing apart the characters, tearing apart the factories. There's not much that can be done. I'm a bit surprised we're, we aren't seeing 400 throw in the towel quite yet, but this is it. And there's the GG. So that wasn't a bad set of push plays from 400, but the Ravens to take out the Stardusts pretty much directly countered exactly what 400 was doing. Very cleverly done there. And that basically was what took the game. Well-targeted Raven Strikes to get rid of defenses that were pretty thin overall. 
Also, it helped that 400 was expanding quite heavily, quite rapidly. 400, sorry, Google Flow was 400 wasn't really expanding all that much. That expansion over to the southwest, that expansion over to the north here. But Google Frog basically took the south, and on this map, that's the key thing. You take the starting point that hasn't been started in. Whoever gets that will probably take the majority of the economy and thus win. And yeah, as you can see, Google Frog's mental income took quite the advantage after the six minute mark. Unit value, similar thing. 400 could not really keep up after that point. Not much metal excess from 400 either. A bit, but not a huge amount. Yeah, overall, that was not a bad start, but really fell apart pretty quick near the end. I just love that smart play with the Ravens, though. Anyway, that was that match. The next match is going to be between... Dimefreund and Failthos, or Feelthus, on Wanderlust. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.